Today we're going to talk about shunts. How do they work and why do you need one? Let's get started. What's going on everybody? Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. So in building your own electrical system, one of the most important devices that you should have is a way to monitor your battery capacity. For many, many years, the way that I monitor my battery capacity has been just looking at the voltage of the battery. That works relatively well when you have an AGM or lead acid based battery because the voltage drop uh, in those chemistries is pretty linear, meaning that when it's fully charged, it reaches a certain voltage level. And as the battery gets depleted when, while you're using it, it goes down more or less linearly. Um, you can basically see exactly where you are based on the resting voltage. But what's also very important when you do it that way is to know intimately the health of your battery, the age of your battery, uh, how much power each of your components are drawing out of your battery because every time something is drawing power from your battery, your voltage is gonna sag. So it's not really an ideal way for somebody who's not familiar or maybe a beginner who's trying to get to know the electrical system in their camper van to to use that method as the way to figure out battery capacity. So what I'm gonna tell you guys today, or I'm gonna show you guys today, is three very popular shunts that are on the market today. Two of them are really inexpensive between the 30 to $45 range, and one slightly more expensive. Well, actually, noticeably, significantly more. It's about three times the price as the other ones. And I will tell you why, why some of these cost more and what the advantages are. So without further ado, let's get into the first one. This right here is the first shunt we're gonna look at. This is a relatively popular shunt that a lot of YouTubers have been recommending online. It comes with the actual shunt itself, and it also comes with the monitor that plugs into the shunt, which tells you the data that it's being captured and, and sent for you to view on this LCD screen right here. It's pretty small, it's uh, easy to install. There's just, put this in line with your negative terminal, have everything go to one side and then the other side go straight to your battery. And this port plugs in to the shunt and then the other side will go out to the monitor so you can see everything that's happening. And then all you have to do is to power it with one small wire, which is not included, unfortunately. You have to get a small wire and just connect this to your 12 volt positive. And that's it, that's what you gotta do to get it installed. And then after that, you have to set it up, which basically means tell the system the total capacity of your battery and also the current state of charge, whether it's completely empty or 100% full. And from that point on, this device will monitor your battery as it goes up and down through the charge cycle. What it can also do is tell you exactly at any given moment how much battery use is being drawn or put in to your battery bank. So if you wanna see just exactly what certain component draws, just turn everything off, and including your solar panels or your uh, shore power charge, and just turn one single device on, and the input or output amperage of your monitor will tell you exactly what that one device is drawing. So this particular one is rated at 150 amps, which means you cannot draw more than 150 amps worth of power through this. Um, it's actually quite a bit. If you think about 150 amps in a 12 volt system, that is something like 2.2 kilowatts of power. A very high power induction stove may be 2000 watts, so this will easily handle that. It'll be at its near its upper limit, but it's gonna be able to handle it. So you really don't need anything bigger than this for a simple van build, but what this thing lacks is other abilities like being able to control a relay or having a temperature sensor or having any kind of data logging. So this is probably about as basic and as simple as a shunt as you're gonna get. This will keep track of your state of charge, which is important because you don't want necessarily a shunt. You can get a cheaper shunt for maybe half the price of this for 20, 30 bucks. 
that will tell you how much power has passed through the shunt. But um, in order for you to know how much power you have left in your battery, you basically have to reset it every time your battery is fully charged. This, you won't have to do that. This is designed to monitor your battery on a regular basis. So that's what you want. So about 40 bucks, you can get one of these on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below. This is, um, like I said, a real basic, simple version of a battery monitoring shunt. Um, no bells and whistles, but it will work. I've not used this, so I can't really tell you the reliability, but generally speaking, the reliability seems to be pretty good from people's reviews online. But I will be testing all of these over you know, the next few months to give you guys an idea about what I think of them. The next shunt I wanna show you guys is also a very popular one, and it's this one called the June Tech. This one is the VAT 1200. That's the model number. There's several model numbers. Uh, essentially, it comes down to the capacity of the shunt, how many amps it's able to monitor. So this is the actual shunt itself with its circuit board, and this is the monitor. One of the noticeable differences between this one and the other one is that this one is set up to use wirelessly. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to be tethered. You can install this shunt anywhere in your vehicle near your battery, and then have this mounted anywhere else. That You don't have to run a long, big wire to it. You can if you want. It does have, it does have a USB, micro USB, so you can plug in this device directly into that using a USB cable, but you don't need to. You just need to power it with a 12 volt source, and this will communicate with this shunt wirelessly. Uh, I believe it's 2.4 gigahertz, so that's pretty cool. So it comes with a pretty good size manual and has a lot of instructions in it to show you how to set it up, what all the features are. This is probably one of the most feature rich shunts that's out there. In fact, it's a little bit overwhelming to look at all the different data that you can see on this monitor. Um, it has negative current protection, over current protection, low voltage protection, over voltage protection. Um, it has an ability for you to monitor the temperature. It has the ability to um, trigger a relay to turn on and off based on any number of parameters. So it actually does a lot. It's not nearly as user friendly and easy to configure as as this first one here, but being that it's more feature rich, this is more, more of an enthusiast, somebody who knows what they're doing, somebody who wants to have all this data. And for me, um, I think this is cool, but it is missing one major feature that I like, which is data logging. I wanna be able to see a historical tracking of how well my system is doing over time. This one, to set it up, um, it's also pretty easy if you wanted to. The one negative aspect about, about this is that in order for you to connect your battery and your cables to it, you have to be able to get to the nut that's under this plastic. And you can't do that when it's set up like this. You have to kind of partially disassemble this to connect the wires before you can put it back together and mount it. But once it's mounted up, you don't have to do it once, so it's maybe it's not that big a deal for you. So for something like this, this will also run you for about $40 to $45, depending on the model. This is the VAT1200. Actually, this says on here, in the, on the shunt itself, that it will handle 300 amps at 75 millivolts. So this is actually more than double the capacity of this shunt. And you can tell just by those copper bars that are in the middle that it's much bigger. Essentially how a shunt works is it measures the drop, the voltage drop between one side to the other side. And because that this is a, a predetermined 
size, so it has a fixed resistance. By knowing the voltage drop and the fixed resistance, using Ohm's law, you can calculate how many amps are being passed through. So that's essentially the real basic idea about what a shunt does. So at $40, $45, I think this is also a good value. Um, I can't speak yet to the quality control or the longevity of this device, but it is very feature rich, even though it doesn't have data logging that I know of. Let me show you what else it comes with. It comes with just a quick manual to show you on top of this really extensive one, a quick um, diagram to show you how you want to wire this up. So you can wire it up using, uh, for the monitor relay, like it shows here. You can wire it up for just basic 12 volt system just to track your input output. And you can also wire it up for it to trigger voltage cutoff, power cutoff using various scenarios. So this is the June Tech. Again, link will be in the description for how to pick up one of these. And lastly, I wanna show you guys the one that I'm actually going to use as my main shunt, which is a relatively new product. This is the smart shunt from Victron. Victron Energy is a really reputable company from the Netherlands. They, uh, they build really good solar charge controllers. So I have two solar charge controllers in my van and both of them are Victrons. They have, one of the really cool things that I like about it is that they have uh, a mobile app called Victron Connect that you can install on your smartphone, Android or iOS. And through that app, you can monitor everything that Victron has enabled through their Bluetooth. So the reason why I got this, this is all you really get besides a couple of wires, right? So this is your shunt. This is actually a 500 amp shunt. You can see the size of that compared to this 120 amp shunt. This is much, much bigger. It's also really easy to install. All you gotta do is do your battery and your negative, and then one wire to a 12 volt power, and that's it. There is no monitor to this. Just like I said, this one, you're gonna be using your Victron Connect app. There is a way to be able to connect to an external monitor that Victron sells through this VE Direct port. I'm not gonna use that. The reason why I got this is because I can use the same Bluetooth app that I already use for my solar charge controllers. And the other thing that I really like about this, which you may have guessed by now that the other two don't have, is this will allow you to data log, meaning I'll be able to track for the last, I believe 30 days worth of input output in my system because it will store it in memory for me to retrieve at any time. This is gonna run you about 130 bucks on Amazon, but to me, not having to drill a hole to mount this monitor or have it be glowing day and night showing me a number or have to get up from my bed in the morning to go see what the battery is at. Just be able to pick up my phone, open my app and see exactly what's happening. And because this is also on the same Bluetooth network as my two solar charge controllers and I also have a battery voltage and temperature monitor also from Victron, I can access all four of these devices using the same mobile app. And that's probably the number one reason why I spent the almost extra $100 to buy this. Because of its compatibility with the mobile device without the use of a monitor, and also that it's made by Victron, and I'm already using the Victron ecosystem, so it makes a lot of sense for me. Even though you're gonna pay about 130 bucks for one of these, this is actually cheaper than Victron's really popular option. They're a BMV712 battery monitor, which, Essentially, this one does everything that does, but for $70 less, the only thing you don't get is the monitor, which is something I didn't want anyways. So when this model came out, I jumped on it because I felt like if I was gonna pay $200 for a monitor, but I'm gonna end up having to mount this round thing that I didn't want to have exposed anyways, was kind of a waste of money. This came out just a couple of months ago, and it's exactly what I've been waiting for. This one I'm gonna be using as a primary shunt in the van, so expect a full long-term review over time on how exactly this device works. 
So that's it. These are the three shunts that I wanted to show you guys. I'm going to get each one of these installed. This one's going to get a long-term review. These two will get basic reviews as I use them. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any of them for you. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.